on World News tonight. Massive crash. Scores reported dead and injured after trains collided in Southeast India. Gone too soon. The world mourns the unexpected passing of beloved friends actor Matthew Perry under inconclusive circumstances. Surprise step down. Mike Pence packs his presidential dreams up, choosing to walk away from the race to the top. Direct from Graceland. From jumpsuits to a school yearbook, the life of American musician Elvis Presley goes on display at London Exhibition. This is Adha Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening and thank you for joining us for World News. We start tonight with devastating news from India. A deadly train crash in Andhra Pradesh has killed at least 13 people. A special passenger train going from Vishakapatnam to Palasa had stopped because of no signal when the Vizagrayagda passenger train rammed it, derailing three coaches. At least 54 were injured when the Palasa passenger train hit the Ragada passenger train from behind at Kantakapali, about 40 kilometers from Vishakapatnam. An East Coast Railway official said that the accident was caused by a human error as a driver of the Rayagada train missed a red signal. 18 trains have been cancelled and 22 others diverted due to the collision. Relief and rescue operations on the track were likely to be completed within the day. Expressing shock over the incident, Prime Minister Narendra Modi affairs 2 lakhs for the families of those who died in the accident and rupees 50,000 for the injured. Next in Bangladesh, authorities have arrested a key opposition figure from the country's Nationalist Party and sent him to prison after hours of detention. The party had called for a nationwide strike after violent clashes with security forces a day earlier. Bangladeshi media reports said that at least three civilians died in an arson attack in the nation's capital, Dhaka. Dozens of others were also injured during the strike. According to the country's police, at least one police officer was killed and scores were injured when a massive rally by tens of thousands of opposition activists turned violent. The opposition has demanded the resignation of Prime Minister Sikh Hasina and the transfer of power to a non-partisan caretaker government to oversee general elections next year. Almost nine hours after detention, police arrested Mir Zafar Kuli Zulam Alamgir, the Secretary General of the Nationalist Party led by the former Prime Minister Kerali Dasiya, Hasina's main rival. Detectives produced Alamgir before a magistrate court when his bail request was rejected and he was ordered to be sent to prison, pending further legal procedures involving of charges of vandalism during violence. Police further stated that a group of opposition supporters attacked the official residence of the country's chief justice during the protest. The party denounced his detention and announced a three-day blockade of mainly roads and public transportation across the country starting on Tuesday. Dhaka Metropolitan Police Commissioner Haibur Rahman said that Alamkir was detained for questioning. Under the law, he must appear in court within 24 hours. Local reports said that the police had raided the homes of several opposition leaders overnight in Dhaka. Home Ministers Asam Dusam Khan told reporters that leaders of Zia's party have to bear responsibility for their role in the violence. Amid growing tension in a country dominated by the two major dynastic political parties of Hasina and Zia, the ruling party's General Secretary Obaidul Khader said that there would be no dialogue with the opposition before the election unless it agrees with four issues, including the ruling out of caretaker government. The party is also demanding that Hasina remain the head of government until the election and it rejects any change to the election commission. The ruling party and its 13 allies rallied in Dhaka to denounce the violence by the opposition. Now updates on the Israel-Hamas war. The death toll in Gaza continues to increase, now crossing 8,000. Meanwhile, Iran's president warns saying that Israel has crossed the red line in the region, which may force everyone to take action. The death toll in Gaza has surpassed 8,000 since armed conflict began between Israel and Hamas on October 7th. According to Gaza's health ministry, the number of injured as a result of Israeli airstrikes is also approaching 20,000. The ministry added that the death toll may actually be much higher, with many people still trapped under rubble. As rescue teams continue their search and rescue operations, a total of 1,800 people are reportedly missing, with 1,000 of them being children. 
With Israel continuing air raids in Gaza, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said Sunday that Israel has crossed the red line in Gaza, which may force everyone to take action, hinting at the possibility Tehran getting involved in the conflict. Taking to social media, President Raisi said the U.S. told Iran not to do anything, but Washington continues to give widespread support to Israel. Meanwhile, the U.S. had initially questioned Iran's involvement in the October 7th attacks. U.S. intelligence suggested that Iranian officials were also surprised by Hamas's attack and that Tehran was not directly involved in its planning, resourcing or approval. Meanwhile, during a visit to Nepal, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for the protection of all civilians in Gaza. While Guterres condemned the October 7th attacks by Hamas, he expressed regret that Israel has intensified its military operations instead of a humanitarian pause supported by the international community. He also urged those with responsibility to step back from the brink and call the situation in Gaza a humanitarian catastrophe. Guterres visited the country to extend condolences to the families of 10 Nepalese students killed by Hamas in southern Israel on October 7th. Residents from the Mexican beach town of Acapulco in the U.S. pleaded for help. They face shortages in food, water and fuel following the widespread and deadly destruction caused by Hurricane Otis as government aid continues to remain pending. Long lines were seen snaking across Acapulco on Sunday as residents there queued for hours for the most basic of necessities after Hurricane Otis ravaged the Mexican beach town four days ago. It's one queue for food, another for water. Many are angry with a lack of help from the government. We need food and water. They brought water, but look how many of us there are. There are so many of us. It's not enough water. Where is the government support? Look at the queue. They tell us that the water will be delivered at 8 a.m. We have been here since early morning, since 5 a.m., risking being mugged because now there is mugging going on in the streets. Stores have also been looted as the situation grows increasingly desperate. At the line for food aid, this woman pleaded for help from the international community, saying she had nothing left. Not all of us looted, she said. We really need help. There's nobody here. Hurricane Otis ripped through the region as a Category 5 storm on Wednesday, wrecking much of Acapulco as well as cutting communications and power. The government said on Sunday the death toll soared past four dozen, with several people still missing. It also said more than 270,000 homes were knocked down in the state of Guerrero, one of the poorest in Mexico. Though the government has sent troops to begin the cleanup, officials admit it will take a long time. In a video message, President Andres Manuel López Obrador promised people electricity would be restored on Monday night, at latest by Tuesday. This will allow gas stations to start distributing fuel, he said. That would be most welcomed by this funeral homeowner, who said the lack of electricity meant they couldn't preserve the bodies of the victims. Analysts have estimated the cost of damage could climb as high as $15 billion. Officials said apart from homes, Otis also destroyed some 600 hotels and condominiums in the tourism-dependent city. López Obrador said the ministers of finance and the economy, along with most of his cabinet team, would be in Acapulco by Monday. But as pieces of broken boats and smashed yachts along the bay showed, the task of rebuilding the city and its economy is set to be a major challenge. Tonight's road to the White House now. Moving on to a major announcement in the U.S. presidential politics now, GOP hopeful Mike Pence announced that he is withdrawing from the 2024 election. The former vice president dropped out of the race, saying that this is not his time. So after much prayer and deliberation, I have decided to suspend my campaign for president effective today. Vice President Mike Pence suspending his campaign during remarks at a gathering of the Republican Jewish Coalition in Las Vegas. Pence, the highest profile candidate to exit the race so far, telling attendees he's leaving with no regrets. 
I will never leave the fight for conservative values. Without him, there are nine Republicans vying to become the GOP's presidential nominee, some offering kind words for the former VP, like former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. He has fought for America and he has fought for Israel, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude. Former President Donald Trump later took the stage at another event, saying the former vice president should once again endorse him. He should endorse me. You know why? Because because I had a great, successful presidency and he was the vice president. Welcome back. The world is mourning the death of one of its beloved stars, Matthew Perry. The actor is best known for donning the role of Chandler Bing on the hit sitcom Friends. The cause of Perry's death remains unknown. Perry's fans and friends have expressed their shock and sadness over his death on social media. His former co-stars have also paid tribute to him, remembering him as a talented and funny actor and a loyal friend. The results of Perry's toxicology tests are expected to be released in the next few weeks. New details surrounding the death of beloved actor Matthew Perry. The star found unresponsive in a jacuzzi at his Los Angeles home Saturday from an apparent drowning, according to the LAPD. Respond to the drowning. That authorities received a 911 call just after 4 p.m. on Saturday about a water emergency at a California residence. Law enforcement sources tell there was no apparent foul play pending a further investigation. The 54-year-old posting this photo in the water just days ago. Today, Perry's family telling people, Matthew brought so much joy to the world, both as an actor and a friend. Perry, born in Williamstown, Massachusetts, was raised in Canada before moving to Los Angeles as a teen. It was there he discovered his love of comedy, joining an improv group. At the age of 24, he would land the gig of a lifetime. He would star in the show for all 10 seasons. I left the message. I have some pride. Do you? No. <laughs> and later in a string of hit films like The Whole Nine Yards, Fools Rush In, and the romantic comedy Seventeen Again. You have really great hair. Oh, thanks. I grow it myself. Despite his ability to mm. light up a screen, off screen, there was darkness. Perry opening up about his decades long battle with drugs and alcohol in his 2022 memoir. The actor said he went to rehab 15 times and detox 65 times. Today, an outpouring of support from California to New York at the famous Friends building exterior used in the show. His on screen mother, Morgan Fairchild, writing, The loss of such a brilliant young actor is a shock. The friend's Instagram account calling Perry a true gift. Our heart goes out to his family, loved ones, and all of his fans. Over in the U.S., a suspect has been arrested for a shooting during Halloween weekend celebrations in Tampa, Florida. Two people were killed and 16 others were injured in the incident. Video capturing the moment, gunfire erupted in Tampa. The horrifying sound of gunshots sending people running for their lives. There are multiple patients shot all the way down the block. Moments later, victims in bloody Halloween costumes receiving help from first responders. And all two people were killed, 16 others injured. Authorities say despite heavy police presence in the area, the shooting started after a fight broke out people aren't hesitating to pull out guns and and shoot and not only kill innocent individuals but hurt bystanders as well one of the two killed was emmett wilson's 14 year old son it's not the first time i done lost a child 2014 i lost my child now here it is 2023 and my baby boy he's he's gone now from gun violence police announcing today 22-year-old Tyrell Stephen Phillips has been arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Gun violence erupting at Halloween parties in other cities as well this weekend. In Texarkana, Texas, three people were killed and three others injured. In Indianapolis, one person killed and 10 others injured. And in Chicago, 15 people shot at a Halloween house party. Tragedies overshadowing celebrations for one of America's favorite holidays. Next in China, where the new Shenzhou 16 astronauts are ready to make their comeback. 
Shenzhou 16 astronauts handed over control to a Tiangon space station to the newly arrived Shenzhou 17 crew. The two crews held a handover ceremony after the Shenzhou 16 astronauts had completed all set tasks. The Shenzhou 16 crew members are due to return to Earth aboard the Shenzhou 16 spaceship. Chinese astronauts are joining hands with each other as part of the efforts to prompt up the development of the country's space mission. This joint effort will enable the sound operation, management, application and development of their Chinese space station, making new contributions to China's space industry in the new era. The Dongfeng Landing Site, located in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, is now preparing for the return of Shenzhou-16 from space. This will be the fifth mission the landing site has conducted to recover a manned spacecraft and the crew. Ground personnel have undergone various search and rescue exercises for the upcoming mission. The Senju-17 crew, consisting of mission commander and astronauts, will stay in orbit for about six months. Iranian teenager Armita Garavad died following an encounter with officers who were violating Iran's hijab law. Garavad was pronounced brain dead last week after she fell into a coma on the 1st of October. 16-year-old Amita Garavan has died following an alleged encounter with officers over violating the country's hijab law, Iran's state news agency reported on Saturday. Garavan had been pronounced brain dead last week after she fell into a coma on October 1st. Right groups were the first to make Garavan's hospitalization public, posting photos on social media that showed her unconscious and on life support, could not verify the pictures. They were concerned that she might face the same fate as Masa Amini, who died in the custody of morality police last September. The incident sparked months of anti-government protests that spiraled into the biggest show of opposition to Iranian authorities in years. Women are required by law to cover their hair and wear long, loose-fitting clothes in Iran and face public rebuke, fines or arrest if they don't comply. Iran has denied that Garavan was hurt by officers enforcing the mandatory Islamic dress code. Welcome back. A suspected bomb blast happened during a Christian prayer meeting in India's southern state of Kerala. For more on that story and more, it's taken on the world for a minute. At least one person was killed and several were injured in a series of explosions at a convention centre in southern Indian state of Kerala. This happened while a Christian group was holding a prayer meeting. The death toll from a mine fire in Kazakhstan has increased to 45. The fire at Kostenka coal mine appears to be from a methane blast and was more deadly than initially reported. North Korean authorities rescued a stranded vessel drifting in the waters near the northern limit dying in the East Sea. They rescued the ship hours after being spotted by South Korea's military. Russia and Ukraine pressed on with their military operations during the weekend, striking each other's military targets including drones, command posts and electronic warfare. Their systems. Wheelchairs need assistance when moving away from flat ground and especially when faced with stairs. However, South Korean researchers have incorporated robotics technology into wheelchairs that allows users to move up and down stairs and even stand in the chair. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash adhaderna english we're leaving you tonight in london uk as elvis presley fans take a closer look at the late king of the rock and roll's life at his famous home in memphis tennessee thank you for watching have a great night